All right, Peter Herman, I have some quick questions for you. This is your mini interview. Okay. What's the no. weird? No. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Herman? Yes. Team Charles or Team Josh? Team Charles. Come on. But, however, 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 um, um, as the team captain, Team Charles, um, I, I will so say, though, that it's, um, it's hard because because I like Nico so damn much. So, and uh, I see the two of them on screen, and I'm like, mm, God, they're so, but uh, I mean, but no. Um, and and the, what both Nico and I always say is Team Liza and Team Sutton, so. Do we even need the issue of Liza's age to be a factor in the show anymore? Or has it gone beyond that and is it built on so much that it could even go without that as an issue? Uh, I, I, am, I am continually amazed at our writers. I think that any actor will, can throw down about the writers on their show. We all will certainly throw down about ours. Uh, and I, I love how they have been able to uh, expand the orbit of what this show is about so it doesn't circle so tightly around that topic. Uh, and I, I, don't, I, I don't think that needs to be the central issue anymore, the, the, the fact of this lie and who knows and who doesn't know. Uh, I think that is certainly, um, it's, it's interesting it's a curiosity it's something to uh it is it is a great piece of humor to keep playing with and the role that that plays in in liza's life and in everybody's life um but i think that the show has certainly moved beyond that liza's wardrobe please discuss so there, so there's the, the there could be a whole podcast on the suit in episode six of this season that she comes in. It was unbelievable. There's like, a, I think that, that suit with Sutton in it can just be its own show. Um, so I, uh, and then you can't talk about her wardrobe without talking about uh, Pat Field and Jackie DiMatteo who just do such an incredible job uh, in dressing everybody on the show. And I also get to wear some, some cool stuff. What's your dream job if you weren't an actor? Ha <laughs> um, um, Possibly, uh, maybe a photographer, um, possi possibly a photographer. Um, and uh, I, and maybe a teacher. Um, because then you're, then you're really making the big money. You know, that's when you're really raking it in. Good. Subway or taxi? Subway or, uh, oh my God, it totally depends. It totally depends. Um, and, but subway a lot. Even the subway with the shape that it's in now, but wow. wow. Paris or Rome? Uh, Paris. Theater or movies? Um, that... There's the there's like the there's like the snobby actor answer, like to act in or to watch. <laughs> <laughs> to watch. <laughs> to watch. <laughs> um, uh, it it absolutely depends um, on on what story I want to hear and how I want to be told the story. So too hard to way too hard to say. Um, but I, I will say for um, the experience of gathering with the tribe to hear a story told in the dark. Um, uh, I'll, you know, theater. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Three actors you look up to? Three actors I look up to. Um, Judy Dench. Uh, um, Mark Rylance. Um, And I think Lucille Ball, Freedom, and yeah. 
something people would never guess about your wife, who of course is Mariska Hargitay of Law & Order SVU. You know, some, something that, um, that many, many people know this about her, and, but, uh, uh, but, but even those who, who know it and experience it for the first time themselves are, are slack-jawed and happily slack-jawed uh, at how impossibly funny she is. I mean, like drop-dead funny. Uh, and, and so quick and nimble in her, in her wit uh, that it is one of the great, great, deep, far-reaching, beautiful gifts in my life um, to, to get to laugh with her. What keeps you up at night? Very little. Oh, you're a good sleeper? <laughs> oh my God. Like alcohol just oh, in your pillow? Like that, yeah, yeah. What keeps me up at night? Um, Yeah, that, that makes it sound like very little. I have nothing. I have no problems. I have nothing to think about. I, uh, but I, I, I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm more the person who reacts to difficulties not by churning but by, by going to sleep. Got it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out. That says everything. <laughs> right, I'm out. So. Your personal pet peeve. Weesh. Um. My 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 long my long standing. Um, my long-standing pet peeve. Uh, it ha a lot of them. A lot of them have. Uh, a lot of them have to do with uh, the way that people speak. Um, so my the the the, the really long-running one is literally. Right. I was. L I, 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 oh my god! That was literally hysterical. People mean figuratively, but they people say literally. literally. Um, and and or or they, or they put it in a place where there is no clarification of literally needed because they're not using a figurative expression. So you have somebody who says, right, uh, like if you see someone on vacation and you say, oh, I bumped into Bob, right? That means I saw Bob. But if you say, I literally bumped into Bob. He was coming around the corner and I was coming around the corner and we literally bumped into each other, right? So you're making a distinction between figurative language and literal language. Um, see, I'm not getting worked up on this at all, but, um, but, but people put it in everywhere. So I was, I was literally walking right next to her. It was like literally, and so uh, that, 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 that bothers me. Uh, and it also bothers me that now there are linguists who, are, uh, who have, in, in, in my estimation, thrown in the towel and said, yes, it's becoming part of the language, that is proper usage. It's not, and they compare it to things like saying that, uh, uh, you know, copy, uh, thing, things become things, oh, it's, a, it's a, language is a, is a, uh, is a fungible, fungible, changeable thing, it's, a, it's an organic thing, it changes, it grows, yes, it does, but I, I take issue with having something that is erroneous usage uh, then get accepted into the language because we all just got worn down by the number of times it's been used. So, excellent. God, I now this was a mini. Whatever. This was a mini interview. But why should everybody tune into really famous podcasts to hear the longer extended version? So listen to the long extended 2.0 uh, super deluxe mix of the Peter Herman interview. You know why? because you get to hear the interview skills of the great, the one and only Kara Mae Robinson. Uh, and she is a delight. So listen for her to see how it's done. This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson, and I interview famous people. But I don't just interview them like 
your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. Sometimes it's like listening to old friends catching up, and other times it's like eavesdropping on a therapy session. Beautiful. Guess what? You are done. <laughs> wow. This one's Good stuff. Long. Now, now we are actually are lifelong friends. I know. 